Today, I'm going to talk about things you should know before going to school for interior design. Hi everyone, welcome to Timmy Chaudhary Design Atelier where I make videos for interior design students and aspiring interior designers. If you're new here, welcome, I'm Tameed, and if you already know me, hi, welcome back. I received my bachelor's in interior design from Texas Tech University, and the program there was CETA accredited, which means that the program meets the standards and assures quality education required after graduation upon entry into the profession, according to the Council of Interior Design Accreditation. So the things I'm going to share with you in this video are based on my experience in college. So always, always, always do your own research. So now that the disclaimer is out the way, let's get to it. Hand drafting is the practice of creating drawings by hand using different techniques and tools which enables designers and architects to plan and communicate their design ideas, if that makes sense. If you want me to make a video talking about the different tools that are essential for hand drafting, comment below. This is something I recommend learning before you go to college for interior design. If your high school is offering something like this, take it and if they're not then learn from somewhere else take an online course learn from youtube i know like a lot of people will get mad at me for saying learn from youtube but a lot of the things that i didn't understand in college i had to look them up on youtube anyway and i kind of learned it better from the person in youtube than i did in the classroom no shade to any of my professors they were all amazing and brilliant and i did learn a lot of things from them but i still had to learn a lot of things from youtube university when i started the hand drafting course in college, I remember they just kind of gave us a list of supplies that we need to get. They just gave us drafting assignments and kind of just expected us to know things before joining college. The first semester, a lot of people failed out of interior design because they expected us to know things that we didn't know that we went to college to learn. And if I didn't take an interior design course in high school, which was an amazing course and it covered all the fundamentals of interior design, I feel like I would have been one of those people that failed out of it. But the different tools that you need for interior design hand drafting, know the different types of drawings that you have to create such as a floor plan, elevation, perspective, things like that. And if you want to learn what those things are, also comment below. You will be using hand drafting the first, at least the first couple of years when you start interior design school. Why not be over prepared than under prepared? I get this question asked so much. Everybody on TikTok keeps asking me if you have to be good at drawing to be an interior design. I would say yes and no because I feel like interior design drawings fall under hand drafting also and hand drafting is something that's all about techniques and tools which can be learned easily because I learned it. I didn't know how to draw before. Actually, as a kid, I was really good at drawing but then I kind of lost it but then I got it back because I started hand drafting and I realized, oh wait, I'm naturally creative, gifted. You can learn how to draft which will be very helpful in terms of sketching that's something that can be super conceptual. You don't have to be perfect at sketching. You can kind of find your own style. There are also tools available to aid you in creating these drawings, such as a tracing paper. So what you do with the tracing paper is that you can put it on top of a concept image that you have. Say it's like a box of, say it's this Christmas tree and you want to create a house that looks like this Christmas tree so you can take a photograph of this Christmas tree print out the photograph and put a tracing paper on top and then you can start by drawing the outlines of the Christmas tree you can put another tracing paper on top and then do lines and make different levels of the building start adding more details and then you will soon have a abstract house wow I'm so smart maybe I should take this idea and then make a Christmas tree house unless someone already made one Drawing and sketching is something that you will be doing during college. It's not something that you have to be perfect at. Once you understand the different techniques and know how to use the different tools, it's something that can be learned over time. Nowadays, most designers use computer drafted programs or even tablets. There will be times where drawing, sketching, hand drafting, all those things might be preferred or even needed. Which brings me to my next topic, which is computer softwares. 
Some of the computer programs used by interior designers are AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, Enscape, and much more. And if you have no idea what these programs are or even heard the name before, it might be intimidating at first to learn about them. I recommend getting the book required by the course two to three months before the start date of the class. And this way you can scheme through the book and see if you can figure some of the things out on your own. This will help you understand what the professor is talking about during class and also help you for any future assignments. There might be times where you're at your college dorm or your college apartment and you are still stuck on the assignment at 2 a.m. Trust me, there will be times like that. And in that case, you can't really email your professor at 2 a.m. because the assignment might be due the next day at 9 a.m. So in that case, what you can do is go on Google and type in the keywords for whatever it is that you're stuck on. There might be people out there who might have went through the same problem that you went through and they might have solved it for you. And a lot of times, the official website for these computer programs will have the answers for you. And if you're a visual learner like me, I would go on YouTube and type in the same keywords and you will find a video where someone is explaining how to use that cer certain feature that you're stuck on. Presentations are an important aspect of an interior designer's job to help express their project to their clients. So this is something you will be using as an interior design student to demonstrate your project to your professors and peers. So putting together presentations is a skill that you need to have that can be acquired through practice. So something you can do now is to look up presentations created by other interior designers to help you learn from their skill. And I will attach a link to the presentations created by designers that you can learn from in the description box below. To practice what you learned, you can also start creating personal presentations for yourself or your friends for fun and this will help evoke ideas and new strategies for your future presentations. For example, for example, you can create a presentation for your dream house or a house for a friend or just create a restaurant design presentation and see what you can really come up with. You can pull different ideas and images from Pinterest, Instagram, you can also pull some from magazines and there's hundreds of websites out there where you can find inspiration, images and concept images. Since you stuck through with me in this video for so long, I have three tips for you that I learned from my mistakes in college. Number one, never skip class. This is so huge. If you skip class, you're probably missing a very important chunk of the lesson. The lectures are so important because they are usually correlated with the coursework followed by the book required by the course. Every single lecture is important for you to understand what the book is talking about. And yes, you can read these books on your own, but professors will share their personal experiences or experiences that they may, might have had whenever they used to be a designer or from their designer friends or other professors and this is your real life experience as a student so you need that in-person experience and if it's not a lecture day and it's a work day make sure to take full advantage of those hours because you can work during class and you can basically ask any questions you might have to your professor during those work hours trust me you will have questions this will also help you avoid those all-nighters that you will also have to pull Number two, time management. And this one is so important because these projects are no joke. You cannot complete a project the night before. You will have to manage your time throughout the week, figure out how you can complete this project on time. And to do that, you can always use different tools like a calendar. You can use a paper calendar or you can also do Google Calendar or whatever other type of app you may be familiar with. And the deadlines are very crucial. Some professors will not take late work or some may be nice enough to where they will take late work but take huge points off of your assignment which will which may hurt you towards the end but anything is better than getting a zero number three oh that's six three learn and work with your peers interior design can be very competitive if you make it there is no cap for how many people can have the best project everybody can have the best project in the professional world you have to work with other designers architects engineers and so many more professionals so why not start that practice now thank you guys so much for watching i hope this helps you in your interior design journey and anything else you might want to know please comment below or any other questions you may have and i will try my best to answer them bye and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Love you.